Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. In this video, I'm going to show you some ways you could search the internet to see if anyone has stolen your work. In a future episode, I'll talk more specifically about copyright, what your legal rights are, and what you could do legally if someone has stolen your work. Now, the first thing you could do and the easiest thing you could do is go to Google and search your name. I've often found that many times websites will quote borrow my images for their website but they give me credit they put my name there somewhere so if you go to Google and search your name you might find a website that did that recently I searched my name on Google and I found this website cool digital dot photography and it brought me back to this web page and it's headlined 51 beautiful examples of black and white landscape photography and as I page through the site you can see there's image after image of these beautiful black and white landscape images and as I approach the bottom the second last image is mine and you can see they gave me credit there's my name they wrote a little copyright in front of it and the image source which is kind of a bonus is they got it from my 500 px so it's clickable people could click that and go back and see that image along with some other images on, of mine on 500px. Now, it's up to you whether you want to do anything about this. A lot of people don't mind a website borrowing their image for this type of purpose, meaning it's just showing off beautiful black and white photography. And they're including your image and they are giving you credit and they are linking back to you some way. Now, it's up to you whether or not that is good or bad for you. A lot of people just like the exposure, and I use exposure, I'll put some air quotes, because you hear that all the time. You know, I can't pay you for your image, but you'll get great exposure. Um, usually, I'll encourage everyone to not go for that route. You don't, you'd rather get paid. And when someone is more of an established professional, they prefer not ever having their image used for free they don't care about the exposure so search your name you got to find out if your image is out there and a lot of times these websites will quote again borrow your image and give you credit by having your name there and maybe a link back to you and it's good that you should know this whether or not you want to do anything about it is up to you so do that now an easier way to search your name is to set up what Google calls an alert, a Google alert. And you can see I have two alerts. One is for my name and one is for my website. That way I don't have to periodically go to Google and search my name. What an alert does is that as Google crawls the internet, if it finds the search term I designated, it will email me and it will tell me the link back to where that search term was found. So I am searching, as you can see, my name and my website URL. That way, if anyone writes about me and they have my name there, I'll, Google will alert me by sending me an email with a link back to that uh, web page that used my name. Also, if someone lists my website anywhere, I will get that link back as well. Now, if you do put your name on here, I strongly suggest that you use quotation marks around your name like I do here. If I didn't have quotation marks, what it will do is you'll get results back whenever, in my case, Anthony and Morganti are used on the web page, but not necessarily in the order Anthony Morganti. Meaning, let's say there's a website and it's showing the graduates of, you know, uh, you know, 2016 graduates for some high school or something like that. And it had Anthony Anderson as a graduate and Pamela Morganti as another graduate further down the page. I would probably get an alert if I didn't have the quotation marks on it because it found Anthony on that web page and it found Morganti on that web page and it would send me that alert. So if you have the quotation marks, it has to be this exact term exactly like that. So set up a Google alert for your name. And again, I'll have in the description below this video, I'll have links so you could find this stuff and easily set these things up. It's very easy to set up an alert. You could have Google email you as soon as it finds it or maybe email you once a day at a specific time, or email you once a week on a specific day, or maybe just get a digest of these things together as many times as it finds it, and then send you one email with multiple instances 
of it being found. So maybe you get a, a digest once a week of every time it, it's found your name somewhere on the internet. So the Google Alerts are, again, pretty powerful tool that a lot of people don't utilize, I think, enough. So check that out. The other thing you could do is you could do what is often called a reverse image search. You could do it with Google. You could do it with at least two other companies I know of. You just do a Google search for reverse image search, and you'll find other websites that allow you to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it with Google. Just go to google.com, and in the right-hand corner, you'll see images. Click on images, and you'll see you've got this now, Google Images. Click on this little camera, and you could see you could search two different ways. You could search by the image URL, or you could actually upload an image to Google. Google. Now I'm going to show you both ways. We're going to go to my website and you can see I have this little picture of me. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to copy the image address. So it copied the URL of that image to the clipboard of my computer. I'm going to go back to Google Images. I'm going to paste the image URL right here by right clicking and clicking on paste. So there is the URL of that little picture of me. And we're going to search by the image. And what it does, it just searches for the image and it found it on my YouTube, it found it on my website. And you can see it find every instance that it finds that image, it will return uh, a list back to you. And you could click on it and go to the website where it's found. So do this with any image. Now I did it with an image of me, but I mean any image of yours, you could do this image search in this way by just searching for the URL. Also, as I mentioned, you could just do a, a search by uploading the image. And to do that, you would click here, Upload, then choose the file. And I'm going to pick this picture of my dog that's on my desktop. And it uploads now the image to Google. Google will now return everywhere that it found this image of my dog. And you can see right here. Now this one here is a little suspect. You can see this is on my website, this one here is on my website, that's on my website. But this one's a Vimeo page. And when I click on that, you can see right here, that's my dog, that's my image. Whatever place this is, I did not give them permission to use my image. So the, no other way to put it, they stole my image and they put it as their little like I don't know whatever you call that right there and I'm going to message them I haven't done it yet I'm gonna message them and tell them to take my image down or compensate me for it now I average personally about two of my images being borrowed and or stolen a month and I've never ever had anyone who has stolen my image pay me for it after the fact meaning I'll email them and I'll say you know if you want this it you know it's gonna cost you five hundred dollars or hundred dollars whatever I'll say and they never will pay me for it but they will take it down usually I've never actually I've never had anyone not remove an image when I've asked them to remove it um, I'm sure that will come to an end someday somebody will just ignore me and leave the image up there and then I'll have to pursue other means and that's what we'll talk about in that next video your legal rights and what you could do so I didn't even know this image was here uh, just this morning I was messing around with this preparing to make this video and I decided to use that picture of my dog because it happened to be on my computer and I and I just dragged it to my desktop and I did a quick search for it and sure enough someone stole it so it, it's quite often you'll find that your images are stolen and it really is disheartening that people would be so bold to take something of yours and use it for themselves without even giving you credit or anything so I will be talking to them about that so that is how you could search by URL and or by uploading your image, so by searching by the image itself. Now, I'm using a Safari web browser. If you're using either a Chrome web, web browser or Firefox, you could search a lot easier for an image. And over here I have a Chrome web browser and I have it open to my Facebook. And on my Facebook I have this image that I uploaded just a couple months ago. And 
Again, if you have Chrome or Firefox and I want to search for this image, just right click on the image and go down to search Google for image. And then it will do a really quick search for the image and it found visually similar images. And then below it, of course, it found my image multiple times. And most of them are stuff I'm responsible for, meaning my YouTube, my website. Um, but it is on Pinterest a lot. It got shared on Pinterest a lot, which I don't really mind. That's not a big deal to me. So, again, it, it's a lot easier to search by an image if you use a Chrome or a Firefox web browser. So check that out. That's really cool. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you is a paid service. And I have done videos in the past on this. This is uh, digitally watermarking your image. And the company I use is Digimark. There's, I think, two companies that I know of that do this and I am not affiliated with Digimark in any way they are not paying me at all but I do use them and I do digitally watermark my images when I put them on various social websites such as Facebook uh, Twitter uh, places like that what a digital watermark is is it's imperceptible usually to the human eye but Digimark has technology where they crawl the web similar to the way Google does and it will find your image because you have the digital watermark on it. It will find it and then it will report back to you that it found your image similar to the way Google Image Search does or a Google Alert does. Now, the disadvantage is, again, it's a paid service and they have three different service levels basic professional enterprise and when I did those videos the prices were a touch cheaper the basic level I believe was 49 back then and the professional level was 99 now it's 59 and 119 and there's an enterprise level and you have to get a quote for them you tell them how many people would be using it and stuff like that but I use the professional level and I'm going to show you this image here and you, another thing you do is, is you have to apply this watermark with Photoshop. It's a plugin for Photoshop. And you would load your image into Photoshop and you would go up to Filter, down to Digimark, and then Embed a Watermark. Now you can see right here it also has Read Watermark. I already watermarked this image. And I don't, I would, I would venture to guess that you can't see it. And what it does, it just goes right on the pixel level of the image. And it just changes the tonality of the pixels slightly in such a way that a computer could see that it has been digitally watermarked. And it will be like, um, it will have your Digimark account number on there so it knows it's your image. And again, so I could go to Filter, Digimark, Read Watermark, and you could see it read the watermark and, it, and the strength of the watermark is somewhere between medium and high in this case. So it's very easy to watermark an image. Then what you would do is you would go to the Digimark website periodically and you would log in and you would go to reporting and you could search for your, your image, search if any images were found. And I'm going to go last 60 days because I know some were found a couple months ago. And I'm going to run the report. And you can see it found two of my images. And this website, Totally Buffalo, used my, my images. And you could click on it. It will link you back to their website where your images are. And it, actually, in this case, it's OK, because this website wrote an article about me. And that's why those images are there. But you could, again, go through here and search for your images periodically. Now, the downside of Digimark, beside it being a paid uh, service, is that it won't go through certain firewalls. For instance, it won't find your image if it's on um, like Flickr, Facebook, I think Twitter, anything that has like a firewall. It won't be able to search those websites. And, you know, Google doesn't either usually. It won't be able to search for your specific image on Flickr or on Facebook. So that is a downfall. So somebody could steal an image and post it all over Facebook and you won't be able to find it using Google or uh, Digimark or anyone. So there is some shortcomings to finding your images in these certain manners. Now, 
what I would love Google to do is to set up a Google alert for an image, meaning, you know, how we could upload an image to Google and do a search for the image that way. I would love for them to have an alert where we could upload an image. So if Google, if you're listening, we'd love to upload our images to you. And if you ever find them anywhere, you let us know. That would be great. Then we don't need Digimark and we don't need companies to do these digital watermarks or these paid services. But, you know, this gets you started. Start searching around. See if you could find your images anywhere. Uh, there's four different methods there. Search for your name and along with that, you know, set up a Google alert when you search for your name. That's one method. The second method is to search by the URL of the image. The third method is search by the actual image itself by uploading it to Google. And the fourth way is to use a digital uh, watermarking service like Digimark to apply a digital watermark to the image and have them search for your image and see if you find it anywhere that way. So uh, the next video, which will be a, well, at least a few weeks away, I want to consult with a lawyer first before to make sure that I'm not telling you something that isn't true. So it might be a month or so away. It will be specifically about copyright, how to get a copyright, what a copyright means, when you actually get a copyright. And most people don't realize it, that as soon as you create the image and you put it out there, you do have a copyright on it. You don't necessarily have to register it with a government, like the U.S. government, U.S. Copyright Office, to own the copyright of your own image does give you some advantages if you do register the work with the agency or in my case it would be the US Copyright Office and if I do it within a certain length of time after the image is created it gives you quite a bit of um, protection uh, that we'll talk about in that video but use these four ideas I gave you now see if you can find your images anywhere and um, hopefully it won't be too long till I get to the second video and we'll go from there. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.